y'all, my name is Belief, and we're here uh, with Black Love Men's Roundtable, okay? Uh, I'm gonna have everybody uh, introduce themselves. I'm gonna start with DJ Damage. All right, DJ Damage, a media personality, producer, and also a heavy hitter DJ. You want Rodney, yep, there you go. Rodney Rakai, television host and entrepreneur. Okay. Muhammad Nitoto, writer, stay-at-home dad. Marcus Tanksley, social media influencer and entrepreneur. Yeah, there we go. And so we're gonna talk about, we're gonna start this discussion. How do we navigate fatherhood, right? Um, if, if this applies to anybody, how do you navigate fatherhood without uh, a good representation of a father growing up? Well, I'll take it, because uh, <laughs> I'm adopted, and also went to boarding school. Um, I think the navigation, I think where I learned how to navigate as a father myself is from community. I grew up in a nation of Islam, and also just going to boarding school, having, um, of course, your peers that are all guys, and it was a co-ed boarding school, it was girls as well, but just having that camaraderie among guys, and then also um, your residential advisors. I had multiple men in my life to help kind of shape the direction. They weren't necessarily father to me, but you know, definitely father figures. And I think I learned from that, just taking bits and pieces of the influence they had on me and kind of reflecting that with my child. Yeah. Uh, for me, man, my father is nuts. So I learned what it was to be a father by like taking away the experiences that I had with my own that I never wanted to have with my child. Mm. Uh, when we have parents, right, we can either choose to replicate and duplicate the things that they showed us, or we can say, ah, I'm not going, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I chose with my pops. He's a wild boy. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> I, I, I actually don't have that same experience. I grew up with my father, um, even though my parents weren't together. Uh, my dad came to my house every day, so he was very active. And I learned just from his level of honesty with me throughout his struggles. My dad always talked to me. Um, when he made mistakes, he told me the mistakes that he made. And I just, because he didn't want me to make them, but because he wanted me to understand the mistake. Yeah. And he always gave me a place to communicate with him. And he still does that to this day. I talk to my dad all the time. Wow. So, right. Awesome. Yeah, to me, uh, my parents were married so I lived with both my parents, I had my dad up until when he passed away in 2018. So mm -hmm. he was uh, he was strict, you know, and I learned later in life of why he was strict, which was, you know, good reasoning. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, he was he was always a good example of father, a good example of manhood. Yeah. Yeah, my dad, uh, we had joint custody, so he lived in California, right? And I, I was in Baltimore part-time, right? So back and forth in the summertime, so my dad, uh, was very, he's, is a very stand-up individual, you know, and, um, you know, he had twins, lost them at birth. Yeah. My sister just passed away in August, so I'm like the last child left. And Sorry so, to hear that, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, and so, uh, can't stay on that long because I'm gonna freak out, but, uh, <laughs> 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 trying to, trying to get past that grief. But, um, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm realizing, like, fatherhood does something to you, right? Mm -hmm. It activates you in a way that nothing else will because it's it's very much like, oh, every step that I've taken, someone can step in those same footsteps behind me, right? Yeah. And follow me here. So I think this is, is, there's a stigma. And when I was growing up, right, 18, right? Before that, if somebody got pregnant, we were like, ah, sorry to hear that, your life is over. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then yeah. you're gonna have to be a parent for the rest of your life and you can't pursue your <laughs> dreams anymore. You gotta go get a job at the factory. Still and still some white people that think like it. Right, still, right, still. right. So, it makes it harder yeah. though. It does make it more challenging. I, I, I became a father at 22. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I always say the toughest thing about being a young parent is managing two sets of dreams, right? I'm, I've always been wildly ambitious. I knew who I wanted to be. I knew what I wanted out of this life. But at the same time, I had to bring somebody else along and try to understand what their dreams were and help them navigate the, the daunting task of How dream chasing. Now? My son is 13, I'll be 14 next month. And then now I also have my 16 year old nephew wow. in my custody full time as well. So it's, it's three different sets of dreams in one household that essentially, you know, I'm the foundation of. If my dreams come true, it benefits them. And sometimes it's sacrifice on both of our parts. You know, it's, it, it's, it's a daunting task. It's not easy at yeah. all. Yeah, man. I mean, for me, when I became a father, the biggest thing that I felt was fear, right? Like, yes. I remember chasing my dreams just like you. And when you're chasing your dreams and you don't have any responsibility, all of your shortcomings only affect you, which it's okay to deal with. I can deal with everything that I put myself through. But once I became a father, I started to think about how all my shortcomings had to were gonna affect my children mm -hmm. who were solely dependent on me. 
And that scared me because mm -hmm. I'd never had that level of responsibility. I'm a big brother. I'm responsible for my little brothers. But the truth is, they got parents for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once I became a dad, I was like, wait, all of my shortcomings are going to affect this little girl. Like, everything I don't have is going to be something that she's looking for. And so I was scared. Mm -hmm. I was terrified mm -hmm. and didn't know if I could actually do it. Yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. know if I was going to be good at it. And then you start to get a different level of respect for your parents because I judged my dad and my mom so harshly mm -hmm. as a kid for things I didn't have. Like, yo, we eating ramen noodles right now. Like, we other kids don't got to do this. But I never understood all the other things that were happening behind the curtains that they were doing so well that I didn't know existed. Yeah. And now I just find myself doing that for my children. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it, uh, it grounded me because... Okay. Um, like you, I had a child when I was like 22 years old, and then a few months later, uh, I had to move to LA from Philadelphia. Mm. So that was crazy, but I look back at it, you know, my son's nine now. I'm like, man, I'm so had I, I'm glad I had that foundation because there's so many distractions out here. Yeah. I always knew what my purpose was, and I felt like without that, I probably been lost in the sauce coming out here at 22 years old, I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. I'm sure I probably would've had five kids if I didn't have that first kid. <laughs> so for me, you know, it was a lot of fear, definitely a lot of fear, um, a lot of worry, but at the same time, like, I knew what I was doing it for. I knew, like, if I have an opportunity, you take it, you can't be afraid. I think if I was only living for myself, this, with my personality, I probably would've shied away from a lot of opportunities, probably not jump. Um, the things that probably will be looked at as risky, yeah. I just knew I had somebody to do it for, so I felt like mm. it grounded me in a good way. Yeah, man. yeah. no, for me, it was, uh, initially, it was just, I was just proud of him. Like <laughs> yeah. my son, he wasn't doing nothing but sitting there and crapping and crying. I'm like, yeah, ain't nobody cried and crap like that. <laughs> uh, but then, uh, however, at the same time, it's like once I did have my, our first child, we got four, once I did have my first one, it was like I had dreams and ambitions. It was like, well, I got to put that to the back burner mm -hmm. now. I can't do that. I got to focus on this. And it wasn't until uh, uh, probably six, seven years later after I had a set of twins to where all that stuff came back. And I'm like, wait, I ain't got to put nothing on hold because I got kids. Actually, this is a reason to catapult that and you know put the boosters on the dreams because mm -hmm. yeah. I need to set an example for them. And I, I always had the mindset of, I don't want them to ever have to be an employee. Yeah. They will start off as entrepreneurs and being employers. However, they will know the value of a dollar. They're still going to work hard. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, that was like the transition that I had with them. Was it, was it tough to mitigate the risk, though? Because you do have somebody to provide for. And when you are oh, chasing yeah. dreams, a lot of times there is no money that's flowing in. Right. So as a man, as a provider, how tough was it for you to strategize dream chasing? That was, uh, that was big, actually. Actually, the dream dreams are still, all of them still haven't come. I'm still chasing a lot of them. However, um, that was with me and my wife. I was the provider because she was like, they call the kite the string. She was the dreamer, the kite of doing her thing, and I was the string, the stability, the stable mm -hmm. one. So for last year, was it uh, May 27th of last year is when I stepped away from my nine to five, and that was probably the most difficult decision I've ever made. Yeah. But it was like, okay, you've been talking about this, you've been praying about this, here's the opportunity, do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, but you know, May was the, my quitting day. However, November was when I decided. I'm stepping away from my nine to five. It took me that long to actually do it because I'm like, this don't make sense. Yep. So yeah. with doing that of, you know, st taking that leap of faith is like, no, I still had a plan. I ain't just going to go out here blind. And it's like, all right, I'm going to run and jump <laughs> off this cliff. Because they say, oh, you just got to jump. You don't just yeah. be going jumping off no cliff. Have a parachute on. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so before I did that, I did need to, for me, I still needed to see the, I still needed to make sense to me. Yeah. yeah. You know, it still needed to make sense. So. Yeah. I I have a, a similar situation, I think. When when my wife, when we had our, I was working, right? When I found out we got, you know, we were gonna have a baby, I was, you know, was like, my wife was like, look, how long is this music thing gonna take, right? Because I'm pursuing hip hop and I'm traveling around the country and it's, it's great, you know? Um, but then she was like, yo, like we're about to have a baby and we have no security on your part. And then, you know, and just really pulling me to the carpet. And I'm like, yeah, you're right, you know? And so I got a job on base and I was working my butt off and doing logistics and counting gear and sweeping and really trying to earn, you know, my way up the ladder. And I realized, I hate this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, oh, yeah, this is fine. That's this fact. is secure, but I'm dusty, I'm dirty, this is nasty. Like, I I'm not going to move up in the rank because... I'm, I never was in the military, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I have this, this this point where, you know, we ended up having our second child and we're paying for daycare. My wife is like, look, if you stay home, we'll save money. 
because daycare is, mm. is insane. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. She was like, daycare is rent. And she's like, you know, you can still run, you can still do a little bit of art and make money. So I stayed home. I decided to stay home, and then that's when I started to create the content. This, you know, being a stay-at-home dad, just mm -hmm. like, but if I don't shoot this, like if I don't record this, no one's gonna believe this happened to me. You know <laughs> what I mean? Right. Yeah. Could you imagine having that level of support with your entrepreneurial spirit and being like a woman being like, yo, just stay home? Right. Because that's not what happened for me. It's, it's, it's a luxury. Beautiful. You're right. It's a luxury and it's beautiful, but it just, imagine the level of stress that would have been alleviated had you had a partner in, in childhood that was just like, hey, I, I want you to pursue mm. your dreams and not prioritize providing. Yeah. Yeah. Th that was wild. Is that what she said, though? Well, no, no, well, yeah. Well, she didn't know <laughs> that I was going to turn it into a business. <laughs> right, right, right. But she yeah. just knew she that, like, I could make money. I'm still a level support. Right. I should say we could save money, not so much make money. Look, we got to pay this. It was a plan. But her thought was this, like, my children, our children, our boys need to see what, what manhood looks like from a man. Right? Yeah. Wow. And, she, and I wanted them to have an up close view. And I was like, I don't, I was kind of embarrassed. I'm like, yo, I don't want to be the dude staying home. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what am I gonna do all day? But when I got home, <laughs> <laughs> when I got home and those kids were sitting there crying, the emotional, like the emotional, mm. like fatigue I had, I was like, Yeah, it ain't no oh, joke. Yeah. That's this real. is sad, right? Like, this is hard, like that's extremely real. difficult because. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. And it's all different types of fluids, right? It's mm. saliva, it's throw up, it's diarrhea, it's solid. You know Man. what I'm saying? Like, and then you go outside. It's green, it's you, brown. You're sweating, you know what I'm saying? None of the stay at home moms at the park talk to you. No. Right? You know what I'm saying? They don't. Yeah, they don't. Right. They don't. Nah. So, so I realized, right, once I <laughs> started to make the content and started to turn this into something, I realized, like, oh, no, like, I needed proof of good fatherhood, right? And mm. once I saw that proof, I wanted to become a dad. Mm. So all the people that we know need proof. So how are you proving fatherhood for the people in your community? See, my my situation is similar to yours, but different. Cause okay. I, I was living in the Bay Area when my, when my wife got pregnant out here. And so I knew I had to leave my job. I was training and I had clients and I was making great money, but I was gonna have to leave those clients in Oakland cause I was moving out here. So I moved out here with no job. And I told her, you know, just give me 30 days. I'm gonna pick it back up. We are gonna be good. 30 days turned into 60. 60 turned into three months. Now my baby's born. I don't got no clients out here. I'm broke, Ooh. right? And so being broke and your wife, she's a personal trainer as well. I just started training her clients because she had just had the baby. But part of helping her after she had the baby, she got to a place where she needed out of the house. So she wanted to go back to work. I didn't have no clients. I was just taking any job I can get and taking care of my daughter. Yeah. And so I started just making videos about it just to make a way for my people back in the Bay Area to keep in touch with what's happening with me as a father because my, my mom's not out here, my dad's not out here. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a very close-knit family and none of them were gonna be able to see this. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to give them proof of I'm doing good like you would expect me to. And doing that while struggling, like it wasn't, it wasn't a happy time. Financially, I had no money and my wife was actually making all the money I couldn't provide. So you don't feel good as a man, right? Yeah, yeah. Even though I'm doing my dad part, I didn't have no money. Mm -hmm. So I'm working overnight shifts, doing security, and what I found out, becoming a father, my children, unlike you guys, you guys had dreams. I had dreams to play in the NBA, it didn't work out. I played sports, but after that, when I had a child, my child became my dream. Mm -hmm. Not so much my life became them, but they unlocked something in me I didn't know was a passion, which was writing and the yeah. storytelling. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't even know, I knew, like, I didn't even write in high school. Mm -hmm. But I write all the time now because I wanted to tell this story of fatherhood similar to you, because I'm at home taking care of this little girl and I don't even know which way I'm supposed to wipe her. Mm -hmm. Like how many other men don't really know how to clean a woman? Because I'm not a woman, I don't even know right. how this works and my wife ain't at home. Mm -hmm. I'm, I got a poop explosion. I don't know what to do here, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, I put the whole baby in the bathtub. That's all you do. Yeah. Clothes and everything, just, uh. Whole thing. Yeah. Just wash it, just threw stuff away. I don't, Soak and like, dip. Let me, just... let me, let me, yo, let me write about this. Let me tell this story because, yeah. so not because I thought I would make money, but just because I thought I didn't have no one to tell me at the time to help me. I wanted to help somebody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward to working security and overnight while writing and then, it turned into a place where I didn't have to do that anymore. I was making so much money that I just could stay home without worrying about providing for my children. So my children actually have changed my life. Mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't, I wanna go chase another passion. It was like, my passion is taking care of them to the best of my ability and writing about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah.
Um, no, for me, on that same question, it was like the kids were the reason that I wanted to show people mm -hmm. um, what, what that looked like, what fatherhood looked like, because like my wife, she's been a social media influencer for since our son, since she got pregnant with our first son. So it was going on 13 years. Wow. To where me, it was actually up uh, over 13 because she started when yeah, she first got pregnant. Up. Yeah, and yeah. And she's like, yeah, it comes natural to her. With me, I always shied away from the camera. Mm -hmm. So we did notice earlier on, it's like when I did to participate, viewership would go up, sponsorship would go up and everything else. So part of me stepping away was me showing people, here's another black father. Here's another stable, um, a, a stable family because that seems to be, you know, the world likes to treat that like a myth, like yeah. stable black couples don't exist. It's like, <clears throat> no, they exist. There's actually a lot of them. Like I don't, most of my friends just coincidentally happen to be married. Um, but I wanted to show that because it, it, this whole myth of that that doesn't exist, but two, also black fathers being involved. So when actually last year my wife went on tour, that was the um, cat uh, catalyst for me stepping away from my job. So it was like, now I'm documenting this. Granted, I didn't like it. You know, kids were still distance learning. I feel like I was in elementary school all over again. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's letting people see my fumbles, my successes and everything and letting them know that there are black fathers out here and people need to see this. People need to be proud of this. People need to, when they see a black father in the park, mm -hmm. they, oh, 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 look, it's just like, okay. Let, it needs to be normal. Yeah. yeah. It needs to be normalized because it is yeah. normal. Yep. Now to piggyback off what he's saying, I, I did this interview and they were like, what you got to say to black fathers that's not around and all this? And I'm just like, I'm tired of it. Yeah. So for me, I think I show it as like, I'm a representation. I'm not showing anything. I represent, mm -hmm. there's mad black fathers out there doing their thing. Yeah. They're not on social media. They might not be <laughs> exactly. photogenic. They're not, that might not be their career path, but they're out there. So I feel like when I do it, I represent them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not doing it to show, oh, fathers need to step up and the guys that's not. Why when I can represent the guys that do? And I know yeah. all my friends um, take care of their kids, all their kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly don't know a lot of men that don't. They're not around me. I can't think and of a single one. My generation is different, man. Yeah, I don't see that. And so. it's socially unacceptable for anybody to exist in the community and be like, but I don't take like, care yeah, of Yeah, but they, you don't yeah. take care of your kids. Like, I, nah, I, I, I'm I can't not going to say that it's you. not, but what I'm saying, it's not going to be around me. And yeah. That's what I'm saying. But like, in our social circles, you it's yeah. normally like, uh, I'm sorry, man. I'm like, I, I can't support you. My person don't got a seat at this table. But it does, it gets exhausting when you always got to, you always got to speak for the people that don't. I'm like, why can't I speak for the people that do? Yeah, right. That's why I do it. You know, I yeah. do it because one, I just love having a good time with my son. And we just organically, we just mesh that way when it comes to social media and content. But on the same token, it's like, I'm doing it to represent the guys that do it. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. doing it for them. Yeah, it's such a stigma on that. Like, I had a situation. <laughs> I went to my son's school one day. They had, I don't know, some event, and it was like, you know, we want a parent, whatever, whatever parent can show up, can show up. I was like, well, I can do it. I can take off around that time and go down there. And he ran up to me all excited. Daddy, I was like, man, God, shut up. Calm down. <laughs> I know, happy to see me, man. This is normal. You just saw me this morning. Don't make it seem like it's been a week or two. Make it seem like I ain't time. seen you in forever, because that's what they believe. It's like, oh, yeah, it's been so long since he's seen his father. Like, you never run up and hug me. And all of a sudden, you're going to wait till we get around all these people. Hey, daddy, man, shut up, man. Calm down. What are you doing? It's like, but it's that stigma. It's like, again, you got to represent. It's like, no, no, I'm always here. You just yeah. saw me this morning. I yeah. yelled at you because you didn't pack your <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> so um, I just want to shift the conversation a little bit more to the co-parenting conversation, right? Because we have uh, some some men here who are uh, with rings and without. Yes, <laughs> yes. you see it. It's very decisive on which side of the table we are, baby. Uh, you got some rings on, <laughs> you though. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the <laughs> other hand, though, this one empty. All right, OK. So um, navigating co-parenting, how, how, how you guys doing with that? Hey, man, the first six years were the hardest six years of my life. I was in and out of court, um, accused of everything from kidnapping to child molestation. Like, it was vicious. Also, my greatest season of growth, what I was able to, to do and understand was another perspective other than my own. The situation with your child, you have, early on, you really don't have much control over it, right? It was the first time I felt like I had zero control over my life. And so I had to step back and really analyze, like, all right, is what's going on here a direct result of this person having this much disdain for me, or does she genuinely feel like she's mama bear and doing whatever she has to do to protect our cub? My son's mother and I were never together. We never had a relationship, so I was essentially a stranger to her. Uh -huh. And so I really, I, I had to step back, put ego aside, and, and, and 
fully look at it from her perspective and understand, okay, she's doing what she thinks is best out of love for our son, and that is something that I can work with. Ronnie, how did you figure that out? Yeah, yeah, I need, I need to know. That's amazing. It'll yeah, take you there. Because, <laughs> yo, I'll be honest, I didn't really understand, I never could understand how a man could not be there for his child until I had a kid oh, with yeah. a woman that I did not know. Mm -hmm. And wow. did not like, if I could be candid back then. I couldn't understand it. Okay. I was at my wit's end. I was thinking about getting my hood cousins to beat her up. I had all of these crazy Ooh. thoughts going, in, going on in my head, and my yeah. spirit is like, yo, this ain't even how I'm wired. Mm -hmm. If I allow this to continue to fester, I, something bad is gonna come of this if I don't try to come to an understanding and figure out a situation that, that's that's palatable, something that that is logical. And if I didn't, I wouldn't be sitting here with y'all right now. I'd be behind jail, behind bars somewhere. So I that came from that. self? Yeah, bro, I, I know spirit. I've always been tapped in with spirit, yeah. right? And I knew that my spirit was off course. I was I was dark. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was 230 pounds. I was dark. I was heavy. And if I did not break out of that, it wasn't gonna be good for myself, which of course in turn is terrible for my son. I had to figure it out. Mm. That's the only thing that saved our situation. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, be like that. Bro, that's something about them first five years of co-parenting. Man. And I like to say, I like to uh I like to really highlight that I'm a, a proud co-parent because a lot of people um identify me as a single father and I'm not. And I think there needs to be more highlight to people that are healthy doing the healthy co-parenting yeah, situation that. yeah. because yeah. that's real. Like, it's yeah. real. like I'm telling you, something about the first five years where you're trying to figure that situation <laughs> it's out. Nasty. It's something about that threshold. But, um, man, I, I am a proud co-parent. Um, I think it's a beautiful thing because it just shows that you can respect somebody and love somebody that you're no longer with. Mm. Like, I look at my son's mother as family now. Yeah. Like, you know, it can't be necessarily your sister, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's still family. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm still close with her family, close with her brothers, her parents. Yeah. And like, it's a beautiful thing when it starts working because it's like, wow, I just really extended my family and it's all love. Like, we take care of each other, we look out for each other. Especially living out here in LA, we don't have the uh, the resources to have, you know, auntie or whatever, you know, watch our kids. So we have to have each other's backs. It's like, yo, if you're trying to go on a trip, mm. I gotta watch little man. I cannot be a hater. Mm. I need you to have fun because you having fun uh, helps you mentally and you're gonna show up better for our kids. So it's like you have to work in tandem. So I think it's a beautiful, beautiful thing when you do like, you know, going through that co-parenting relationship in a healthy way. Well, question to y'all though. Do y'all have that third parent in y'all co-parenting situation Not yet? yet. No. Not no, yet. my son's mom just started dating somebody that she just moved in with, but mm -hmm. they're back in New York. Me and my son and my nephew live in LA. We're 3,000 miles away. So mm -hmm. he doesn't even really get to interact. You know, with, oh, so with he's time. with you full time? Full time, yeah. Yeah, see, it's okay. different. <laughs> it's different. New so, levels. Yeah, because see, my wife, so I met my wife, she had been married before, she had kids. Um, my wife had four kids before we got married, right? Um, we have two together, so we have six total. They had a, a relationship before me, mm. and then I came. And it made things weird because, you know, when you have a kid, it's two people come together, y'all have a baby, that's y'all agreement. Yeah. A third person coming into that agreement is outside of the agreement. And if that third person doesn't agree with what you want, uh -huh. how do you mesh that person? So for a, lot of for a long time, I felt like I was just like on the outside looking in, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I, I knew I wanted things to be a certain way in my house but I also didn't want to come in and feel like I was trying to take your dad's place because I'm not. Mm -hmm. And they, they spend half the time with their father. They got a great relationship with their dad, right? So I wasn't trying to take his place, but I'm also like, but if you're in my house, I, I'm the dad over here. So you're the father whatever, of the yeah, house. whatever he lets you do at his house don't mean you get to do it over here. Yeah. And for a long time, instead of handling situations that I didn't like, I would tell my wife, like, oh, the boys aren't listening to me. Wait till your mother get home. I'm going to tell on you which made me like almost an uncle or an older yeah, cousin. Yeah, he's a mall cop. They, yeah, because they didn't care. <laughs> I was mall copping it. That's exactly what it was, because it was like, yo, they listen to me to a certain degree, but like they listen and better when they mother around. Sure. And I was like, I can't live like this. I'm going to go crazy. That's real. If, if, I, if, if I can't handle you guys, I'm not, this ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. So I told my wife one day, I was like, yo, because uh, one of my sons, we got into, he got mad at me for sending him to his room, and he was like, yo, I hate you. You hear me now? This is the one who... When his parents separated, he was young, but he was old enough to understand. Mm -hmm. He was really young, so he was dealing with that. And part of me wanted to understand, but I'm also like, you know, who do you think you're talking to, fam? Like, right. people don't talk to me like this, like especially not nobody your size. Like, right. so <laughs> yeah. I'm like, since I ain't, I'm, I'm not spanking nobody. You ain't never seen me discipline nobody. You ain't never seen me hurt nobody. You talking to me like. I can't hurt nobody. I'm like, okay, cool. I got to have a real conversation with this kid. So I went in there. I said, hey, yo, listen. 
And here, I'm the end of the road, bro. You, you might think I need to tell your mom on you, but I'm only doing that for you, not for me. Be careful who you're talking to. Then I told my wife, I can't have you stepping in when I'm dealing with them anymore. Mm -hmm. How did she receive that? She didn't receive it great at first. She understood, but she was scared. Mm -hmm. See, her fear was, what are you going to do? Yeah. And how is this going to affect my relationship with their father? Mm -hmm. How did you guys work through that? Oh. OK. OK. <laughs> Maybe you still work through it. No, no, no. We, we work, so this is how we work through it, right? Um, I told her the truth. I said, listen, do you trust me? You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we got kids together. You got to trust me to a certain degree. Yeah, I'm not going to hurt these kids. If you can leave me alone to watch your kids, then you you trust me. Right. Don't act like you don't trust but me. But it has discipline to be our kids at yeah. the same time, yeah. too. It can't be these are your kids and these... Like, but it, it takes to time to turn into our yeah. kids. See, when hey, you look. first hop into a situation, they're not our kids, they're your kids. And that's not even a me thing. That's going to be like a you thing. When, you're, when your baby mama gets with a man, and that's going to be your kid, not their kid. It takes time it for takes even the time. kid to understand And that it too. takes time for the you're kid involved. because, yo. You're an evolved black man. Yo, <laughs> now, it's if you, different. If it's it's different. Not, I'm no, talking. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not going to disregard yo, it. Yo, no, not. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm, it's a little, like, I'm a little like, I'm a little different. No, no, no. It's cool. Like, it was like, from, day one, from day one, they, they would call me Mo, right? Like, when you meet me, yeah, yeah. your mom is going to introduce me. Mr. And Mo. they're not going to call me, you know what I'm saying, Mr. Mo or Mo. They're not going to call me by my name. They're not going to call me dad or anything. So when a child calls you by your name, you're not a parent. You're an adult, which is not the same thing. My, my boys call me Pops now. But it took time to get to that Ooh. place, right? And that's going to hurt your feelings, yo. Nah. Man, yo, I'm your son called another the man Pops? I he might, might hurt flag you. on the play, son. <laughs> he might hurt your feelings. They call me yo, Pops. Especially if he's that's involved. Part of I wouldn't hear Rodney speak. Yeah, if he wasn't involved, involved, that'd be different. That's but he's involved. No, no, no. No, 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 and no, no, their, no, no, no. Don't father, say their father's involved. Their, father, so. their father's involved yeah. half the time. He calls me, they call me Pops. Personally. Go ahead, drop it on me. <laughs> Give it here. Right? Like, yeah. I think that it's important for you to play a very significant role in them children's lives, 1,000%. We are aligned in that. All right. But for my kids to mm -hmm. call another man Pops. any iteration of father or daddy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, no, wait, I take, let me get it. I let take, me get it. I take let me get it. issue with that. I think that there are other... I had a stepfather growing up. His name was Marion. Right? Yeah. Like, he was never... Mm -hmm. He was never my dad. He was never my pops. Even though my father was a wild... Wow, boy. Like, I never could refer to that man as anything other Why? than my stepfather. Why? Because it's it's just a level of, it's a line of respect for me. Okay. I just, now I wouldn't me, cross Now, tell line. me this much. You're a man, you got kids, right? Facts. If your kid, because you said their mom lives in New York, right? Facts. They out there. Your son's in trouble. You can't get there. You're going to expect that man to be there like you, right? 1,000%. You're going to want him to take care of your kid like you, right? Still not possible. But you don't want him to have the same respect. Still, no, no, no. Not, we're, not, we're not talking about respect. We're talking about title. No, no. Titles, but, titles matter. Just like in corporate America, titles matter. And yeah. it'll, it'll dictate your pay rate. So, too, in the household, do titles, titles matter. I can't okay. have my son call another man pops, especially when I'm an active, like, very active so, father. So and they, but no, but their father, no, Glenn, their father felt this way. When we had the conversation, Damn, skip he was like... <laughs> No. Okay, was this while he was cutting your hair? <laughs> no, not while he was cutting your hair. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I was about to circle to that. It's a whole journey to this, right? No, because, no, listen, we were out. I was out with the boys. I was playing ball. And normally when I'm out with the boys, people just assume they're my kids. And it's weird for a step-parent to correct people like, nah, these ain't my kids. This is my stepkid. So people are like, oh, your son's over there playing ball? I just say, yeah. Absolutely. So then I sat down with the boys and I said, hey, does it make you feel uncomfortable that I just refer to you as my sons when we're out? The younger one, who I've known him since he was two, so he had no real memories of his parents together. He just, me, I've always been there. He said, no, you're my dad too, right? And I was like, yeah, but the older one was kind of like, I, I'm okay with it, but I, I understand that I have a dad, right? Mm -hmm. So he understood the difference. I was like, I just call you guys this because you're my kids, I love you, I treat you like my kids. Mm -hmm. There's no difference for me, right? I love you. If you out, I'm not correcting nobody. If you have a problem with it, I will. But if you don't, this is what we're doing. They said, yeah. I said, cool. Then I had to have a conversation with them about how it made me feel when we're out. And people were like, oh, yeah, your son doing this and this. And they walk up and call me by my name. You can get a nickname, bro. See, but Yo, I'm a no, grown no, 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 man. No, 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 Kids this. ain't calling right, me no nickname. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say this. Let's from DJ because, because me and my son, we're like, we're like best friends, right? And eventually, his mom is going to find somebody. If she hasn't already found somebody, that's going to step up, hopefully, and become a man to her. That, that's something you should wish. When, I, when you have a co, when you're a co-parent, you want somebody to step up and treat that woman right because it affects your child. So me, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it because 
Me growing up, I didn't have a dad at all. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't mind my son having two positive representations as a father. Why not? I could be dad, I could be whatever, you can call him pops. Me and him should be cool. Me and him should be bros to some extent where we can have a conversation because the ultimate goal in this is to raise that child right. Yeah, so yeah. the names and titles for me, it don't really mean much. I get it though, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm thinking about <laughs> said, nah. nothing's gonna break yo, the mind with my yo, child. He, I'm nothing telling you, he wasn't cool mind. with he wasn't cool with the dad thing. I mean, with, with me being called any variation of dad, like you said. And so when he called my wife, he was upset. He was like, yo, they'll be calling him by his name, and that's what it is, that's who he is, and left it at that. And then it was like a week of military silence. I was hot. I told my wife, look, we about to have an issue you ain't never seen me have before. It's about to be like that. And she was like, no, let's just talk. I'm like, nah, forget all that. Because now we now we about to have an establishment of power, I felt like. Mm -hmm. This is about to be who is dominant here. Because man politics, uh, uh, I like un this. Unfortunately, amongst men, <laughs> it starts to get that way when I'm like, is. this is what I want for you, for these kids. And you tell me no. Only people can tell me no is people who can whoop me. I ain't lost no fights in a while. Right. Oh, that's a different, that's a different energy. <laughs> but, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, that's a different energy. Right, because no, you about, about to... But, but, but that's how I felt. I feel That's how I felt, because when you said, so I'm like, yo, we, I love this these kids. Gonna Why this how we gonna end it. This how we gonna end it. This how we gonna end it. We gonna leave it to the comments section below. All right? Is it, is it, is it okay for your child to call someone else mom or dad, right? Or, you know Variations. Variations. Do you call your ex-girlfriend babe? Huh? Do you call your ex-girlfriend babe? I don't take care of my ex-girlfriend. Because titles matter, right? So no, at, at a point, I, I, let, I, I see. see. Point. Now, if you had an ex-wife, huh? if you had an ex-wife, if I got divorced, if I had an ex-wife, you had an ex-wife who yeah. you were you had you were providing spousal support for, mm -hmm. would you still call her baby? I don't know. All right then. <laughs> but, titles because titles matter. matter. But but no, no, but, 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 it's, but it's different for children. You gotta think about it. You providing? No, no, gentlemen, I've known the boys. Sorry, sorry my bad. I just five. can't do it. We done ran the clock. Yeah, yeah, they giving us the light. Hey, hey. Sorry, bro. I love it. I love said, it. No. But we out of time, right? So we're gonna see y'all next time. This is the Black Love Men's Roundtable. Peace. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs>